Now, there are certain people who uh, just do things without arguments. That's not wise. Yeah, it is God's nature that things are done through arguments. That's why we have the old agreement, the Old Testament, and the new agreement, New Testament. Okay, so there are two agreements, the old one, and then there's the new one. So the old one passed away and the new one came to play. Glory to Jesus. Okay. In business, we talk about uh, safeguard agreements. For example, if you're going to get into a joint ventureship with somebody, or if you want to do business with somebody, you have to safeguard yourself and they also have to safeguard themselves. So you enter into something called safeguard agreement. In fact, for high levels of business, you have to sign a number of documents or a number of arguments. You have to cut a number of deals. Number one, you, you have to get into what we call, um, okay, I'm not going to put them in any specific order, but you have to sign a non-disclose agreement. Uh, when you're in business, at certain times you're required not to disclose what you're doing to a third party or some other person. So you have to sign and enter an agreement saying, I will not disclose our secrets. So there's non-disclosed and there's non-compete agreement. You might have to bind the person with whom you're entering an agreement or a covenant so that they don't compete against you unfavorably. So non-compete. So you cannot enter an agreement with a competitor when you're doing a certain type of business. Let's say, for example, you are in uh, soft commodities like um, grains, like wheat. And then uh, you are getting supplies from somebody, someone supplying grains or wheat to you. And then someone else comes up who is a competitor and they want to enter into the same agreement. That's a competition that's not right. So if you've signed non-compete agreement, then your agreement must come to its end. It must expire first before you compete. All right. I remember when I was younger, I used to do TV commercials and uh, things like that. And I remember doing a shoe polish commercial so i had my saxophone and they're using the luster of the saxophone the shiny surface of it to reflect the shoes of somebody and it was being polished by this brand that wanted visibility and i remember signing a document that stated that i was not allowed to engage any other shoe polish company for the next two years so that agreement is called non-compete agreement. And then there was another one called non-circumvent agreement. That means you're not allowed to go behind the other person's back unfavorably. Okay? So you don't jump the one who introduced you to business and then you go straight to the source. That's called circumvention. That's what Jacob was good at. Jacob was a circumventer, you know, a supplanter. He knew how to jump things. So he took he took the birthright from Esau. He circumvented Esau. So in business, you are required to sign a non-circumvent uh, agreement. And then there's another one called non-disparage agreement. Non-disparage is where you're not allowed to talk badly about the person with whom you're doing business, even if you fall out. Okay? So even if you fall out, you're not supposed to talk badly you are not supposed to say negative things about the person with whom you're doing business. Now, do you see how people fail in life? Because they break all these things. They circumvent. That means they go behind you. All right. And maybe you introduce them to somebody and they think if they can leave you out, they'll make much more money. So they circumvent you and they go to the source and they give a better price and then you're left out in the cold. Those are things that are not required when you're cutting a deal. You need to be a person who is wise. So Abraham cuts a deal here with God and he's going through the process of doing it. Five processes of, of cutting a deal, all right? And then after, after you've, you, you've dealt with the non-compete, non-disparage, um, non-disclose, non-circumvent, yeah? Then you go through the process of, uh, of the agreements now, signing a safeguard agreement, joint venture agreement, and then memorandum of understanding. So memorandum of understanding, MOU, is just to declare the kind of agreement you want to get into. What business do you want to do together? And then if it is about partnership, then you sign uh, what we call joint venture agreement because you're contributing and I'm contributing. So in joint ventureship, and then you sign none, uh, not nine, you sign safeguard agreement. So this is what safeguards you so that you don't lose. And it safeguards me if you're in joint Ventureship. Are you seeing the agreements people have to enter into to do business? Yeah, it's quite elaborate. It's tasking. Okay, so every agreement is always tested by demons. Even a marriage agreement. See, people sign 
a marriage certificate when they get married. That is cutting a deal. And the, the deal is the marriage itself. But you'll find that the devil will always try out that kind of a covenant or an agreement. So even in business, the devil will try you out. Maybe the person with whom you've entered the agreement changes their minds. And sometimes you may end up in court. So you have to be prepared to chase away the birds. That means you have to be a prayerful person who can destroy demonic spirits that are bent on interfering with your business or your employment. Do you know that when you get employed, you cut a deal? Did you know that your job description and that agreement you sign with your boss is actually a deal? You're cutting a deal. That states you'll be working from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. every single day. And you'll have two days free. That's Saturday and Sunday. And then you'll have maybe three weeks, 21 days of a holiday. A year or whichever period of time you're talking about. And then your payment, emolument, yeah, your compensation, your salary is stated in that agreement. So you're really cutting a deal. So how do you then cut a deal that favors you during hard times? First, you have to destroy the demonic spirits that are always contrary to argument. So you work for somebody and they end up not paying you. It means they've not fulfilled their part of the bargain. They have gone against the agreement. How do we mitigate things like that during moments like this? So the fouls of the air are the ones that make such agreements foul. Are you kidding me? Yeah, all puns intended. Yeah, the fouls of the air are the ones that make such arguments foul. And you need to know how to deal with demonic spirits when you're a business person. You need to know how to deal with demonic spirits because they are always out to disrupt and to destroy anything that will make you uh, successful and that will cause you to make profit. So you need to learn how to deal with demonic spirits and how to destroy them, how to get rid of them when you're doing business.